YouTube, it's your boy, Sean Mitra here, with my first PSCT video, and this is the battle phase. Now, there's a collection of these. These are not going to be more, I'm not going to make them, I'm not going to make a 40-minute video on the PSCTs, because it's going to be ridiculous at that point. Nobody's going to watch to the end. Uh, I'm going to break it up, so that way you can watch them individually. So this is the first one on the battle phase, and this is something that every, if you want to be a pro in Duel Links, I'm going to have my pro series, and I'm going to have a whole guide of everything going down from the, all the videos that you can watch to become a really good Duel Links player. But this one is the battle phase, and the battle phase is something that a lot of people take very minimalistically, because you don't think of it too much. You think they attack the monster, it gets destroyed in battle, and that's the end of the story. But there are a lot of different decks that have uh, banish at the end of the damage step, banish before the damage calculation, uh, activate only in the battle step, activate only on declaration, battle replays, which I did not occur in here. I did not write down in here, but we'll talk about it. Uh, it kind of comes up with what I talk about in one of the slides, so. Um, but we will go over that. There's a lot that needs to happen and where everyone can get confused on little bitty things that could determine a huge outcome in a duel. So this is something every duelist needs to know. I highly recommend you watch this. And with that being said, let's get on to my PowerPoint. Okay. So first, first things first is the start step. Now the start step is where initial attack declarations occur. So what's very important here, hold on, let me up my mic volume a bit because I think I'm a bit low. Just give me like one second. Mm -mm 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 -mm. There we go. Yeah, that's why. Okay. Okay. So what happens here is we have start step. So start step is where initial attack declarations occur. So if we make an attack declaration uh, and cards that activate at that point when an attack is declared, or on attack declaration activate. So for example, if we act, we attack and they activate Mirror Force, then Mirror Force will destroy all of our monsters. Now keep in mind, these cards have to be activated on attack declaration. So if you have a Mirror Force set, you must activate it then. You cannot wait to the battle step or the damage step to activate a Mirror Force. And there are several reasons why. For example, Mirror Force is a normal trap. It is a spell speed one. Secondly, if we were to activate our, um, yeah, secondly, our card says on declaration. So if you miss that at that at start step, then you are going to be not allowed to activate it forever for the rest of that turn. Okay, well, not for the rest of the turn, until the next attack is declared. But until that declaration is over, until your opponent attacks with another monster or a new monster, you cannot activate that mirror force. Now, what's also very important is Start step, right before start step, is the entrance to the battle phase. So when your opponent says enter battle phase, once that happens, uh, you are allowed to activate effects before they your opponent declares an attack, which is very important if you want to use Call of the Haunted to revive a monster before your opponent can attack. So things like, think about S-Force, right? Now, S-Force have their own version of Call of the Haunted. It's called S-Force Specimen. So if you wanted to revive a monster from your graveyard to get that protection for Bridgehead, you must toggle on and then activate a card at the start of the battle phase. You're, the game will not prompt you to activate a card at the start of the battle phase. You have to toggle on in order for that to happen. So be very careful with that, okay? So make sure that if you want to activate a card before your opponent declares an attack, you activate, you have your toggle on, and then be able to do that play, okay? Now, like I said, example on attack declaration are Mirror Force, S-Force Bridgehead, Magic Cylinder, etc. These cards activate on attack declaration, and it's very important that you remember them. Your monster declares an attack, a target for the attack, and then the attack continues. Now we are going to go on to the next slide. Next is the battle step. Now the battle step is... Uh, the last chance to activate cards that specifically aren't spell speed 3 or occur in the damage step. Mostly cards that resolve in the battle phase can be activated here or let, will let you resolve in the battle phase, battle step. 
That meant to say battle, uh, battle phase. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so cards that say uh, can be activated in the main phase or battle phase, generally like quick effects, like spell speed 2 effects, you can activate in either the battle phase, uh, battle step, or the deck, or the start step. So either way, you can activate them in either of these phases, the start step or the battle step. So a card like Crystal and Citri, that's in Duel Links, is a perfect example. It says during the main phase or battle phase, you target one machine monster in your graveyard, uh, target one monster in your graveyard, revive it, and then synchro summon a machine with it. So that could be occurred in the battle step as well. If you're playing Master Duel, a common example of this would be Battle Butler. Battle Butler could be used in the main or battle phase. So cards like that are not going to sit it out for your Duel Links players as well. So either one of these can be used in either of our situations. So just keep that in mind. Um, the battle step is the last chance before you can activate spell speed three. Now you're probably asking me, what the hell is a spell speed? What the heck is a spell speed, Sean? We're about to go over that in the next slide. Oh, actually before we have that, we have a quiz for you guys. Okay, and this is a little bit of a quiz. What happens here? Okay, now here we are in the battle step. We use Call the Haunted to revive back our Gravitino. Can we protect our Gravitino with, uh, from the attack from being destroyed by battle? Can we do that? Are we allowed to do that? I'm going to give you a minute to think about it, and I'll let you write your answer in the comments. Not a minute, but more like 20 more seconds to think about this. Before I give you the answer. Alright, this is long enough. Okay. So the answer is, no, we cannot. Because, even though, yes, we are in the same column, as you can see above, we cannot use Bridgehead to protect Gravitino, because we use this in the battle step. Uh, S-Force Bridgehead suggests that we have to use it in the battle at on attack declaration. And remember, attack declaration occurs in the start step. So if we want to use protect our monster from being destroyed in battle, what we would have to do in the case in the scenario like this is we would have to activate Call of the Haunted at the start of the battle phase. So before the declaration occurs, we'd have to have our toggle on, activate Call of the Haunted, or generally in an S-Force deck, S-Force, um, specimen to revive our monster back at the start of the battle phase before our opponent can declare an attack. So that quiz, if you said yes we can, you are wrong. If you said no we can't, you are right. And if it's okay to be wrong. This is why we're here. We're here to learn. But I want to keep you guys paying attention. I want you guys to see this up close. Okay, next slide. What are spell speeds? Now, a spell speed is a very common occurrence. Spell speeds mean how fast the activation timing of a card is. So, one are ignition effects, which basically we'll go over in a different uh, types of effects. We'll go over in a different video. Uh, but normal spells and traps. So, these are effects like your dark hole is a normal spell. Mirror force is a normal trap. Ignition effects are an effect that would occur not on summon, not a trigger effect, but an effect you activate of a monster on the field, just generically. So something in Duel Links would be a good example would be like Endymion. Uh, Endymion is an ignition effect that does not occur on summon, you have to activate it on the field. Meaning that if you summon the monster, your opponent can activate a Book of Moon before you are attempting to activate that effect. We do not have ignition effect priority anymore, that is gone. Or something like a Judgment Dragon or a Dark Arm Dragon are also ignition effects. A common one in Duel Links right now that's being played I would say in the meta would be, uh, I'm trying to think of a good one. Um, yeah, well, Endymion was the one that comes to mind initially. Uh, still trying to think of a good one, but most of the effects that we have in the meta are kind of triggering effects. But, you know, if you guys could think of another one, write it in the comment description below. But right now, Endymion is the one that kind of comes uh, close in mind to me. Gear Freak could be one. Gear Freak's a good one. If it hits the field, you have to um, activate its effect to... Uh, well, no, it's not really an English effect, but yeah. Okay, anyway, uh, moving on. Um, moving on, uh, fourth. Okay, next, Spell Speed 2 are Quick Effects and Quick Play Spell Cards. Quick Effects are cards and effects that activate, generally, let's say, during your opponent's turn, Quick Effect, 
you can use this effect. Or it will say during either player's main phase or something like that, or during either player's turn. Those are common mornings on quick effects. And those are cards in Duel Links like Constellar Pleiades, Rocket Tracer. Both of those cards can be used on either player's turn. Right? Or your Live Twins. Right? Revise. What about your Live Twin Links? Your Evil Twin Links? Kiss a Kill, Lila. They are also quick effects. So we have a lot of quick effects in Duel Links that are meta relevant. So keep that in mind uh, when keeping that in mind. Those are Spell Speed 2s. And those can be activated during either player's turn or in either player's battle phase up to the damage step during the battle phase, battle step, or start step, or even at the start of the battle phase. Next, quick play spells are your Book of Moons, your Chalices, your Lances, your Droplets. Those cards can be activated. Now, Droplet and Lance and Chalice are a little bit different. They, they're they going to classify in a different state, but that's okay. Um, we're going to talk about them as far as spell speed twos. Uh, the one thing I did not write down here is like cards that modify attack and defense. Those cards kind of fit into like the spell speed 3 category. And those can be used in the damage step and damage calculation. Uh, we talk about the chalices, the lances, and the droplets. Uh, so yeah, that's that. Okay, give me one set. Alright, and then that's that with that. So counter traps and damage step effects. Those occur at that yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, sorry. Uh, attack reduction or attack increasing effects. Those can be used in the damage step. So Chalice, Lance, and cards like Droplet. So keep that in mind. So smart, smart plays that you can do is that sometimes you want to take them to the damage step. So there might be a card that they might want to use in the battle bit, like Book of Moon. So that's a Spell Speed 2 card. So they can use that up until they damage step. So if they want to, if they're holding a Book of Moon, maybe to flip down your monster to prevent an attack. And they think maybe, hey, my, your monster's weaker than mine. I don't need to use book here. But if you're paying attention and you take them to the damage step and you say, oh, but I can now use my lance to weaken your monster, then they can't use their book of moon anymore. So keep this in mind. So keep that in mind with reading delays and whatnot. So that's very, very important when playing Duel Links. Okay, or whatever. Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG, whatever. Okay. Now, Spell Speed 3 are your counter traps and damage step effects. Now, what's very, very important here is cards like Ultimate Providence or cards that negate activations. I didn't write this down either. Cards that negate activations can be used in the damage step. So if you negate the activation or something like a Chronomaly Vimana, that is a damage step effect. That can be used in the damage step because it negates the activation. So if you use a Vimana that negates the activation of a card, you can do that. If you use a counter trap like Magic Key Unlocking, that can be activated in the damage step. Something like Magician's Navigation cannot be used because that negates effects. Cards that negate effects cannot be used in the damage step. All right, But if you negate the activation of a card, these are two totally different things. You negate the activation of a card, generally like uh, like I said before, Chronomaly Vimana negates the activation of the effect, then you're good to go. Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon negates the activation of the effect. So you're good to go. That can negate the damage step. So be very careful. Okay? This comes up very... Um, a ton in the Speedroid Mirror. And you need to be very careful of this. Okay? So now we're going to go on to the next slide. Which is start of the damage step. Now this is a very, very important one. Okay? Now the damage step is very, very complex. And you need to stay with me through this. Because... This is where a lot, most duelists get confused. You're generally fine up to the battle step. Yeah, there might be a few cards that you may not know that can be activated in certain places, but there. Are, this is where everybody gets confused and it gets very complex, okay? Because there are multiple cards that say the start of the damage step, before the end of the damage step, before damage calculation, blah, 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 and you don't know where all these different things occur. And because of this, and you don't know where priority occurs, you don't know how your monsters and your opponent's monsters are going to interact. So it may not be a case where you don't know where their deck, with how their deck works, but more in a case of how their cards interact with your cards in the damage step, right? So this is where you got to pay attention. So at the start of the damage step is where set monsters remain face down. So this is very important. So if you use a card like Sea Stealth Attack, Mystic Swordsman Level 2 was very common like back in 2003 with this, but... At the start of the damage step, if you use a card like, uh, say, um, 
see stealth attack, right? You're playing Crystron back in the day. If you attack their monster or you use something like a Catastor, their monster will be destroyed without flipping it. So if you attack something like a Shuttle Dragon or you attack, well, Catastor won't apply here because like Catastor, it does apply, but you won't know if it's a light or a dark, whatever. So you can't really apply that. But something like uh, see stealth attack, if that attacks a face down monster, it will destroy that monster. A level five or higher water will destroy that monster. So if you attack with like a Sulfethanir, Sulfethanir into their face down, it will be destroyed and they will not get the flip effect. They will like a Shadow Dragon effect that pops your card in the field will trigger because it was set by a card effect, sure. But the flip effect that bounces the card back to your hand will not trigger. So keep that in mind. The start of the damage set cards that say at the start of the damage set, your monsters don't get flipped. So keep that in mind. Next, the flip monster is revealed. Now, this is pretty self, not not too in depth here, but this set monster is then revealed, and flip effects do not occur. So, once the flip monster is revealed, uh, it does not occur immediately. Now, that's very that's not so important because nothing really occurs at this point. But just to keep that in mind, uh, that is an additional step of the damage step. Next, this is very important. Especially in the present Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links meta. Before damage calculation. Now, before damage calc becomes before the end of the damage step. Now, the reason why this is very important is because Constellar Caduceus has a very powerful effect. Which will banish a light or dark monster it battles before the end of the damage step when attached to a Constellar Exceed. So, if you battle Yubel the Ultimate Nightmare... And you're saying, uh-oh, will my monster die or will their monster die? Well, their monster is going to get banished and they're not going to get the effect. Because you bell the ultimate nightmare occurs when the monster is destroyed in battle. That does not happen until the end of the damage step. So something like a Constellar Caduceus will attempt to banish their monster first. And very important, as I wrote, as most duels do not know where the damage step ends, this is where Constellar cards such as Constellar Caduceus would occur and will banish you, Bell the Ultimate Nightmare, and Neos Wiseman. That also will happen as well. So keep that in mind. Next is damage calculation. Now this occurs when uh, we start to calculate the damage that you would take in battle. So Durham's calculation reduces the damage to zero occur at this time. Kite or Karibo. So cards like, it lets, you can only lance up until the end of the damage until the uh, beginning of damage calc. So normally, if you have your toggle on, right? Let's say you're in damage step, right? And you're using Lance and Chalice. And you say, hey, why does it make a difference that my Lance is going off twice? Why does my Lance get revealed twice? Well, the reason why is because it it prompts you for the start of the damage step in the end, the, the start of damage calculation. Now, as a player priority, you have the you have the advantage on attacking, okay? You are turn player priority. So you will always be a chain link one. So if your opponent, let's say, well, honest isn't in this game, but if you attack and you activated your honest and your opponent chains their honest, their honest goes and boosts their monster, but then yours will boost this chain link one. Be you will always be the priority, the last one to boost, and you will get up with their monster. It's the same thing with Lance or something. You always have the priority to activate, so you can kind of force them into activations, being that you're the one who's attacking. So keep that in mind here, okay? So, you know, you have the priority because you're, a, you're um, the turn player. Now, also, Ky Karibo, Kiteroid, these cards activate during damage count. So, th during this point, you cannot chain cards like Lance, Chalice anymore. Okay, this is damage count. You only have the ability to chain your damage effects like that until the attack reduction increase effects until the end of the damage step. I mean, until the, not the end of the damage step, the end of damage calculation, okay? So that's very important, all right? Until the start of damage calculation, not the end, until the start of damage calculation, okay? So be very important with that. Now, during damage cal, Kite, Roy, Karibo, those all activate. If you still negate the activation of effect, you can do that here. So something like Chronomaly Vimana, Ultimate Providence, Divine Rev, all those cards will occur here, okay? Because so, you can opt to negate these cards. Crystal Link, Synchro Dragon. All right. Also, this is where it gets very complicated. Monsters marked destroyed in battle uh, are marked as destroyed in battle. So any effects that apply in damage calculation 
uh, occur even if the monster was negated on field. Now this is very, very, very important. You build the ultimate nightmare is not a lingering effect. Okay, it does not linger on the field. Once it is off the field, the effects do not apply of cards like Valor anymore. All right, this is not the same thing as activating a Lone Fire Blossom, uh, Valoring something like um, uh, what's a good example, Planet Pathfinder, and then you negate the Planet Pathfinder, they're going to tribute it or Take Tomborg, and then it lingers on the field. The effect activates on the field, and then it lingers. That does not happen. Okay, this is what a lot of people think happens, but it does not happen. Okay. So what ends up happening is if you Valor and you bell the ultimate nightmare, yeah, they're going to take the damage, but what's going to end up happening is their monster is going to get destroyed in battle, and then once it's marked for destruction, it no longer lingers on the field, and then you take the burn and your monster will be destroyed in battle by card effect, not by battle. All right? So be very careful with this. this all right? Be very careful with this. All right? Once that monster is destroyed and marked for destruction, then that's the case. Uh, Neos Wiseman is different because it is not marked for destruction. All right, if it's not, unless it's destroyed in battle, it's not going to occur that way. Okay, unless you're literally destroying in battle. If you destroy Neos Wiseman in battle, then yeah, then it will, the same thing will occur. But you build the ultimate nightmare is very common for this because it has zero attack. So everyone thinks of it in that sort of fashion. Yeah, if you're playing Earth Machine, you can activate a chalice and then kill them over it with Leva. But, you know, that because you're going to do all the damage. Like, you deal damage to your opponent before damage count occurs. So, like, if you activate Chalice on their ultimate nightmare, go to attack it with a Leva, they will take 5,600 damage. However, as, assuming you boosted it to 6k, that's what I'm assuming here. But, you know, so they will die before they can trigger ultimate nightmares. In fact, like, their death comes before that. But I'm just telling you, in that sort of fashion. Now... We're going to be back to another quiz, and we're going to see how much you remember. All right? So this should take you to another quiz. Oh, this happens first. Okay. So like I said, after damage calculation, cards that trigger during this point are destroyed in battle and can trigger off the field. Both Neos, Ubel, and Neos Wiseman will trigger at this point. So if you use Veil or Chalice on Ubel, it will not prevent the burn and destruction, as I just noted. Oh, okay. So the... Okay, wait, 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 wait. Did I blow right by the quiz? Okay. Give me one second. Uh, okay. Anyway. All right. All right. So let me... All right. We missed the uh, quiz, but that's totally fine. It doesn't really make a difference. All right. Let me XO for this. Okay. So that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked it. Uh, it pretty much went over all the rules of the battle phase. Uh, so if you wanted to, uh, if you want, if you, I would appreciate it if you like, comment, sub. Uh, I have more of these coming out. Uh, I got to work on them. But the next one I will probably be on missing the timing. That's, that's the big one. Probably won't be as long, but we're going to talk about it. We'll talk about when and if effects and optional triggers and mandatory triggers that will all come in the next video that I'm going to go over. But yeah, until next time, it's your boy Sean Matry signing out. Peace. Bye, YouTube.